What we're going to now is something that a man built when he found out he had tuberculosis and moved from Seattle down to Phoenix, built it out of a bunch of junk and it's called the Mystery Castle. Here is beautiful Phoenix. So what's kind of interesting is that where this house is or this castle that we're gonna see is they've built up like a whole housing community and golf courses and everything all the way around it and then there's just this place and when he passed away the man who created it he left it to his daughter and wife and then they came moved into it and then started offering tours and the house was featured in a life magazine story in the 40s we are very very close so here it is the mystery castle the creation starting in the 1930s of Boyce Gully and Boyce found out he had tuberculosis apparently back in those days uh, there was a community here that had a, uh, a pretty good tuberculosis hospital and so a lot of people that had tuberculosis were coming to Phoenix and he came here started creating this for his daughter and then in 19 and oddly enough cured of tuberculosis at one point and then stayed never went back to Seattle and then eventually died of cancer in 1945 and then his daughter and wife came and moved into the place opened it up and then Life Magazine found out about him and did a piece on them in the 1948 Life Magazine so let's go take the tour yeah that sign's no joke they made a documentary about this and won an Emmy. Can you believe it? Let's go on in. So his thing was getting most of his materials from junkyards and creating everything himself. Wow, that is great, beautiful. So we're gonna start this tour here. Wow. Hey, how y'all doing? You're gonna, you're gonna see a pillow that it says Mona Miao, made by Leonardo da Vinci. Soak it in, you guys. <laughs> the coldest are in the summer. This is the really guest the house. We want to be in during the summer months of like June and July. Uh, if you look over in the corner here, we have some family portraits. So you can kind of put a face to the name. The last of the family to have lived in the house. She passed look away how he did the windows. So really not They're actually the glass building. plates. Uh, put his face, but There's the, the idea was bed. that you could just roll this thing out if you wanted. And once you're done, you can just stash it underneath the floor. It's kind of cool. Probably recognize so these that the wood for the holes. ceilings is old boxcar uh, siding. If you look at the round windows, you'll see the rims of this car. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is safe around the guy. So how there he is. Uh, That's boys. <laughs> look at the windows. They said he went to great lengths to not pay for any of the materials that he used to build this. Woven baskets easily over 100 years old. Wow. Story goes is that they weave these so tight they could hold water. water. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you look over here by the entrance, we have our saguaro skeleton. 
This thing's pretty cool if you've never seen one of these. It's the, it's the structure along the inside of all of the cacti everywhere. When the saguaros die, all of the fleshy stuff withers away, and eventually this is what it leaves behind. Um, nowadays, you'll struggle to find one preserve this well because the ones in the desert are pretty beat up. Uh, this one is only as nice as it is because it's never been moved. The guy had built the room around a living cactus, and it's been here ever since. Uh, if you want to step outside for some fresh air, that's fine. Just don't get lost on us. Here's one of his old rooms for a window. Now this house also has a cemetery inside, as well as a chapel. Over here on this little bench ledge, you can kind of see what he made. What he made it out of, all the little materials. Kind of reminds me of Nitwit Ridge in Cambria. You got a cat sleeping in there? Wow, look at this place. They said when his daughter Mary Lou inherited this place, she actually lived here for like 65 years. She inherited it in 1945 and then passed away in 2010 and gave tours here until she passed. Look at that stairwell. Isn't that amazing? And if you look closely in here, you'll see like a cat. Now it looks like we're heading on in. Oh. Piano. Snake. Did whatever he thought a castle Here's should have, right? So this chapel. is his chapel and prosperity. So you're going to see him everywhere in the building. Up in December, so not too long ago. They were leaving their shoes behind on account of this poem that the lady wrote. It goes. In the chapel, like the bride leaves, the baskets. and forever will her bring you true. I think she was just waiting for Look at that. And they said they believe snakes are a sign of prosperity, so that's why there's snakes all over the house. And they actually chase them out of the house because of the climate around here all the time. The cat rocks. Here you can see it says for better, for worse. And then that's a handwritten message from Mary Lou Gully. In the chapel, if the bride leaves one shoe, then forever will the groom be true. And so here you have a bunch of shoes stacked up from weddings. They said they have weddings in here in this chapel and that the uh, bride and groom usually stand on either side of the snake. Now we're in his bar. They actually use this wagon as a bar. Pancho Villa. Look at the bartender. And there's the sitting area. And they said on the roof of the bar he actually had a wishing well so you could wish for a drink. <laughs> Look over here, we picture a Groucho. And then here's the cemetery inside the bar from beer from beer to eternity. John Wayne. Oh, it's, it's really a more of a hallway than it is a room. If you're in good 
There's a painting of the house. Rabbit rocks. Picked up as part of a gold and copper mining claim to keep the city off his back. The guy's actively digging these pits everywhere. Filled in over the years, but this one he'd left behind for his family as a time capsule of sorts. Right, the guy who built the house spent a solid 15 years working on the place and removed from his family the entire time. They hadn't seen the guy in a while. Um, so he left this behind for his family. Portraits of the guy commissioned in his final year, so at least they'd know what he'd look like in the end. They found stacks of uh, letters, some he'd received from the family, some he'd written himself, $500 bills and whatever, yeah. And all the gold he'd pulled from the property over the years. Pretty big day for the family. It's more than a trap door then. <laughs> it just kept on giving because uh, somehow the lady had gotten Life magazine to make their way out here just for the day they opened the door. So we were published in the January edition back in 1948 and people just started showing up. It was a big problem early on because she started finding strangers just walking around inside of the house. And she was kicking people out of the place every single day until finally she put up a sign that said we charge for tours. So here we are now. You know? Now we're going up to the living room and the kitchen. Wow. And there's the wishing well that he said that they had kind of like as a dumb waiter, so you could wish for a drink and then they would send it up. Uh, faceless cat. There he is. Voice. It says, so this is the Garden of Eden. I see a lot of fresh faces, white water and power. So if you guys lived on site, chances are this is where you spent your time. She was 86 when she died. 86 or not. Look at all the rocks. They all have animals on them. He said he, uh, when he first started this, he started with the fireplace and lived out of his car. Is that the gun holder? I see a couple of pistol handles. This is boats for women. This was his bedroom while he was building the house. And they said this was Mary Lou's bedroom when she first moved in for a short time, but it's also the hottest room in the whole house, so she didn't stay in this room very long. You're welcome to take photos as we walk around. Check that out. That's the kitchen area. They were saying that they didn't even, uh, the family didn't even know he was doing this. They, they didn't even know why he left. He actually left because he was given six months to live and then started working on this. And then when he passed away, they found out that he had left him a house. You can kind of see what's outside. You notice this doesn't have a faucet it's because they didn't have running water here until 1975. So sinks with no faucet. This is Joan Wayne, the castle cook. Ants in your pans. Cock of the walk. You can see some of the old uh, dishes here, the Petit Marin. But then you can also see a Will Smith mug from Wild Wild West with Kevin, Co Kevin uh, Klein. 
Now we're gonna go check out the gift shop. Look, this stairwell over here, I don't think we get to take it, but uh, you can see how it's made out of logs and it would have taken you up to the roof. The mother-in-law room. Well, we have just completed the tour. What an awesome experience. I love when people create things like this. So, you know, this is Breck and I's wheelhouse. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Come back and see us tomorrow. Breck and I are heading off to somewhere else right now and we're gonna do another vlog that you will see tomorrow. So, have a great night, everyone. And good night.